Hey there, and welcome to another video tutorial on stable diffusion and comfy UI. So this video will be kind of a summary of all the previous video. Okay, so we have Comfy UI, fantastic user interface, a little bit uh, tricky to use, but I guess that you're getting the idea now following the previous videos. But now let's do a sim uh, summary now of what we have done. So basically, I started to use this one and based everything in this very sim simple examples. So I also recommend you to, to use these examples, but if you want to expand Comfy UI, you can do very complicated uh, workflow. So to summarize what we have done so far, so we started with the most basic workflow, which is just getting, loading your library, putting your positive negative prompt and just giving some action from the sample, you know, the classical bottle example. Then from this one, we work out a little bit and we went to the second no, uh, workflow, starting from this one, because in SDXL, we can use a refiner. I mentioned that in my personal opinion, uh, I don't get much better results or any big improvement with the refiner, but here you have the workflow. Uh, it's a little bit different from this one because remember I'm grouping everything. So in one video, we talk about a little bit how to group and put some order there because this can become a big spaghetti. Then we went and we move to Adore, another case that we use the LCM. The LCM is a, a method to accelerate the, the generation of the of the image. So it's a, it's a lot of library, okay? But we use, oh, actually, no, this is a standard LoRa library, okay? So we were talking about uh, the standard methods, then we can add a lot, a lot of simple, simply a small library that you plug into your main checkpoint. And this one was going to add some style. So just to remind you that you can put all your loras in one location. So you have uh, different folders, stable diffusion, your main checkpoints, load and so on. So the load, they are located in a specific folder and just some specific styles. What is important about this load is that you need to know how to trigger the model. So for this specific one here, I have how to trigger and the best way to know how to trick that model is when you download the library, always look at the developer, what he, he he's saying, how to use, because also they, they have very specific you now instructions and combinations in actions. So this is specific model, you can get it from here. And here you have how to trigger the keywords. Also, if you're entering one image, also you can get kind of the example how to trigger. So be careful about that. That is not just putting the lot out, lot is also triggering. And then you have this weight that you also, you can have more, you can give more or less weight. So in this case, we added this lot and we have a different composition because it's the weight of that one. Also, we can uh, combine different lot. So I didn't present a video of that, but it's quite simple. Just have here one lot and then put the other one and start to link, 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 link. Be careful about this because it might happen that some of these loader can have a very strong weight over the other. So in this case, we have two, one for nature and one for the Simpson style. And here I combined. So as usual, remember how to trigger these models. So in this case, I add in different ways. So I don't want to give a very high weight to this one because I know this will have a strong weight and I will give the strongest weight to the Simpson style. And this is how I have it. Okay, so this is how I control. So see that also here I, I give a high weight and a not so high weight. And the rest is exactly the same, nothing change. Be careful also remember to use the LoRa model for your main checkpoint. So if you are using a Excel model, try to use no Excel LoRa because they might not be compatible. So be careful about that when downloading because those LoRa are also trained according to your model. And this is what, what I was mentioned, the LCN LoRa. It's another LoRa, but it's to make uh, way much faster uh, rendering of your image. So basically you load this, the, your, your LoRa library is on a specific LoRa library. Let me go and remind you that you need to get that one. We have the example here and uh, you need to download your, your LoRa way here, here you have the model car. So also take, take some time, read what is happening there. Okay. Cause this is a very interesting model. So this can cut in half, at least in half your image generation. Okay. So here we have pretty much 
this and this is a different where you're always using the same seat in all these cases but different training but this one it will speed up in this case if i will recall this by three times exactly the same keywords it is trained also 2024 be careful about that and then the particularity here is that not it's not like in this one that you just connect the model this one also you have some different uh boxes here so your sampler you need to add this new one here okay for the for to sample the lora okay be careful about that and also it is recommended to use these two well the sample name you need to use the lcn so when you add this one you are adding the lcn and then the use the sampler and then this is always recommended now seven steps and it will give you good good very good photorealistic uh, results way much faster than using uh, your full your full workflow then we move to what i like which is the turbo the turbo is fantastic this is that does real time images so as you are typing in your in your prone you get images so in my case i can get images in less than a second and also to load this one be careful that you use a different sampler this this custom one then you need to check this box here not to get this one so i will share all those these workflows in, in the descriptions but here you have it and then okay you have another sampler that is recommended to use this one and that's all uh one thing that this specific model does not take negative prompts okay so here it doesn't matter what you put there it's not going to take it and let me do here so for instance you you keep adding there let me go and let me put let me run this one because i love it and it's crazy that i asked you i already showed this one but i always like to to redo it because this blew my mind kind of the first time i use it and this is what i use i generate my initial i generate my initial images there and then i start to do something so let me raise the moon there so uh okay l to q and it will go there. And then as you start typing, it will keep generating the images. Then I put my body out of there. Then I will say a man looking at the moon so in my case it take like less than a second if you have a way much power for video card it will be super super fast then wolf next to man rain well i want this one wolf rain and i can add i don't know train in the sky so you start to put your fantasy and this is the way i mentioned that prompts everything is about, about prompts so i think this is the best practice to the, the, the best way to practice prompts so this is what you get okay putting clarity so this is already i added the moon there quite nice this composition so this is about the tool i love it this is the way i work and to remind you also that there is, there is not only one turbo library, so you have the official SDL, SDXL safe tensor for stability AI, but there, there, there are some others. So in this case, we have the Dream, Dream Shaper XL Turbo, which is pretty much the same. It is a little bit slower, but it will give you also photorealistic images. And I would like to use this one to do a last, a last ex exercise. So I also recommend this one. You get very, very good results. So actually, this is the exercise that we're going to do for the last time, just to show you my workflow. So we're going to try to reproduce this image. But here you go, and you have different checkpoints. The last one is the, is the, is the Turbo one. And here you have the advice and also some, some instruction how to use and so on. But it's the, the concept the idea is the same. It's a much better Laura, and by the way, the previous one is 500, 512. You have to be very careful about that. This one was trained with a 1024, so you can have larger images and different aspect ratios, okay? Much better results. After that, then we move, and here we're looking at, at scaling. So for instance, we can generate this image. You see here that actually we have this image, and we didn't use many steps, three steps, and there is a lot noise there is not very well in focus but it's you increase those steps just to show you you're going to get a way much sharper image and let me go here let me raise there are launch many and you start to do it with six steps and this will be in about five six seconds let's see 
So while the other one, the, the base SDXL with refiner can take 20 seconds, okay? Also depends on the image size. This one is way much faster. Okay, let's see. And there, I don't know what it, ah, oh, okay, sorry. I always remember that you go here and you need to disable the auto queue, otherwise. So, well, in any case, look at here that I generated this one and I increased the steps and it's much sharper. But in this case, I took the image, okay, the one that it was out of focus okay, with a lot of noise. So basically we go to upscaling, take this image, then apply a upscaling in pixel space so it can, it can improve something, but at this point we need to go and latent space, the one where we add that fantasy, we have the models working. And here I go to the latent space, I upscale that one by 1 1.2. Also be careful here because if you put two, you will upscale that and, and it can use a lot of money, uh, a lot of, uh, sorry, a lot of memory. So here, when you go in upscaling space, whatever image you take, doesn't matter what you take. Also those images that were scaling, they don't need to come from, from Image generation can be actual photos. Okay, there is no problem on that. So here you can load a mobile. So this is a full mobile. In this case, I love in this one the jogger now. I, I really like this mobile. And the race is pretty much the same. And look at that now doing the okay after the latent space of scaling, putting your mobile, it will do a very nice reconstruction. And you can do even better, then you can pass another upscaling step and so on to get very nice images. And that is what you, you sort of will see in the images generated. And for instance, just let me go here. When you go here, and you will see that this is generated using the turbo model, but you use the turbo model to generate base images and then you pass upscaler to upscaler and upscaler. And there are many pa passes that can be expensive. Okay, so we go from, we went to the upscaling and then we ended with some painting, which I mentioned is quite tricky to control. So basically here we, we take this image, okay? We mask a region and then I say add the moon there or whatever. So this is really tricky to control as I mentioned. And in this case, the result is not very satisfactory, but yeah, you can control it much, much better. I mentioned that also you need to use specific models, no uh, train for any painting, but they not always work. So in this case, if I use one of those models, the results are not very good. So I have to use this full model, which is give a good result, but be careful about that, that you have very specific models trained for that. And also the in painting is not just one step. Many times you need to add to have a very good in painting. You need to add stuff like control net and scaling and so on. So the workflow can be very, very complicated. And as you can see, all the workflows that I'm giving you here are relatively easy workflows. So now here also I mentioned that when you do also in painting, I like to put some weight to the words that I'm adding. So remember in this case also add some keywords related to your composition there. So you have the image and whatever. And then I like to, whatever you want to put, add some way that can give you better results. Then this is out painting. Okay. We didn't talk much about, or actually we didn't talk at all about out painting. Out painting is the same as, as in painting. Okay. You need to mask. Okay. But the idea here is that you take the image. So we have a starting image. You say that now add here, you look at that you have here your pad, your for image out painting. So the workflow is pretty much the same, but here now here, you're going to put a new layer, which is which is this one, how you want to, to increase your image. So I say increase to the left, top, right button, this size, then you have the feathering. So it's kind of the transition from here to here to the out painted region. Then you have this grow by mask that is saying something here. It's like how you transition also your mask from inner to to the outer part, or from the outer to the inner, dependent. And yeah, in reality speaking, I would say eight will give you better results, and the rest is in. So look at what happened here. So I say do that, and it will add this in painting here. As for uh, out painting, sorry, as for in painting, it is recommended to use libraries specific, you know. For, for in painting. So our painting is an in painting. Okay. So you use that library is recommended, but you can use the standard library. So for instance, in this case, I went with another approach, you know, I'm using this, this is a unit loader. So I'm using the diffusion model, the, 
the paint and whisk together with the checkpoint here to do all the trendy layers there. So probably this is a, a much better workflow. And uh, look at that, you have this using exactly the same options, just the unit loader for the diffusion model and see that pretty much, I would have to say that it's a much better output, this one. It's a better transition, almost a perfect transition here. And here you see, kind of maybe you can see the interface there. And that, let me show you actually, because here, talking about that, that mask, and so on. So this is the effect of how you grow your mask and the combination also for with the feathering. So look at that, you start there. This is the mask zero, mask one. There is no effect. Then you go mask four and you start to see the effect. Okay, so this is how for the inner part, you grow your mask and try to merge everything with that part that you are trying to obtain. And eight, you see that that's why I always use eight. And also you will see many workflows that the people use eight because it tends to be a very good result. It's, this is quite good. Then I go 16, 32, pretty much not much different. And 64 tends to oversaturate since the actor is the maximum value, 64. So eight or 16 usually for me are, are the best values. Okay, not much different. So this is the idea, okay, out painting and the second approach. And this is it, okay? And this is the effect. Here you can see the effect of the of the of the feathering, okay? Or like, this is how you transition there and control that that mix. So these are all the workflows we, we share. And before now doing that last example, I would like to show you something. Let me go here. Because there are many other online uh, application apps that you can work and do all this stuff. So you have Leonardo. Leonardo is fantastic. I really like. Then you have also Playground, and then you have also Night Cafe. All of three, these three are really good. You have all these options, but pretty much they are doing what I show you in these videos. However, they have a, a new secret sauce. Okay, they have their they are magic, magic, very elaborated workflows to give very good results. But from time to time, you can get strange results. And here I have wrong wrong way. This is the one I like to use. And just to show you, you know the the in painting and out painting because that is the most difficult stuff, honestly. So here you have in this case. All these tools, by the way, are not related at all with these people, the, the people from, from Runway. So this is a free publicity from then, for them. So let me show you first out painting. So you have many options. So you have also remove background that would be kind of in painting, out painting. So that is using control net and that is stuff. But let me use out painting that here they, they call X10 image. So let me use the same image here as mentioned you can just say how big you are your your canvas and so on and aspect ratios you can change your aspect ratio let me go here white screen this one and let's generate so basically it will take your composition your image and it will try to grow everything sometimes it will give good results sometimes not very good result but this is what we get in this one okay so actually this is fantastic result so let me go here and voila there you go so you see that maybe you will see some artifacts here but this is part of the magic how you can control and something similar you can get with comfy ui i show you but this is very impressive this the the, the guy from runway ml they have the, their own checkpoints to do all this stuff okay they have very specific checkpoints and then to show you just to end here again the in painting that is super difficult honestly even using these tools it's quite tricky so let's do this so usually they give you different action but let's do the same stuff now that i put the moon here somewhere here then you add your prompt so let's say present moon and this point let's see what we get Sometimes also you have some options here from way. Okay. So you can fix your seat number and let's see what we got. So sometimes I like to use also this tool because they are much faster. Now that when you use this service, usually they have very powerful, uh, video car so like eight 100 stuff like that in my case it's not very powerful so this is what i got so as you see not very nice result when it comes to the moon the transition with the sky i have to say it's perfect but they give you also different generations so we have it there so this is cool this is not and i'm quite sure that i can get something like this using my own 
workflow in a, in Comfy UI, but it will require you know, putting a, a mask with content net and so on, and even using that standard a standard workflow. I think I can get something similar, but generally speaking, it's quite it's quite tricky. You see that this moon here looks very 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 artificial. And uh, let me do something else. So let me let me go back and generate this one. No. So but, 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 let me go back and to destroy. Let's see what happens with our good friend Pikachu. So let me destroy Pikachu. But actually, let's go. I forgot to extend. So let me. I didn't save the image. So let's do some extend the image. So let me take this one. So let's extend the aspect ratio. Generate. So you also have the option to add a new prompt, so you can guide also those images with the prompt. So this is cool. I let me I like this one. So let me move this one to my bum, 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 to my asses. So I would use this one. I have it. And now let me go and here, and I have it here. So I love this tool. It's fantastic. And let me go here. I put a big region and let's put our frame Pikachu and let's see if we we get something there. So yeah, I, I use this also well. I have this workflow to add the table and grow the table now using Comfy UI and add no one like an Apple Pikachu a book there, but it's very tricky. So yeah very nice. As you see it's very artificial, but then you can go on you know, a Pikachu, you know, realistic or photo realistic and um, let me say okay so okay bam, 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 bam. okay let me go back and okay let me do another one there so let's put it there so photo realistic Pikachu. So let's see if we get something better. One for instance, doing this, these are st steps that you see here that is quite fast and runway. In my case, using my computer, AJ, it takes more time. Now I have a less power for video card. So this is what we get with the photo realistic. Not very nice. Okay. So what you get the idea is it's very tricky to control. Okay. So that being said, let's move to the last case that I want to show you the workflow that the, okay. So this is the workflow I want to show you. So let's try to reproduce this image. So it's done with Dream Shaper XL. So here you have many images. So you can try to reproduce any of them and all around. So sometimes, you no. Know, it's quite funny. You try to reproduce and you never get your same results, even as you use the prompts and so on. So as you go here, you have all the keywords, everything. So basically remember here, we're going to use dream, uh, dream shaper to do this one. So we have everything. So let's do this. I already have these images there. So let me see. Okay. Where do I have that? So bam, 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 bam. Okay, so this one will be so here I, I have my workflow. Okay, I have everything I'm using Dream Shaper. You need to download the, the checkpoint. Here also we talk about a little bit this clip here, the last layer. Then we have the sampling, the recommended one by the developers, the number of steps, the noise value, you know, the random value, the CFG, and the dimensions, and your positive and negative. Very important. This is a specific model. It takes negative prompts, not like the standard from SD, SD Excel Turbo, not the standard SD Excel Turbo that doesn't take this one. This one, it takes the negative prompt. So basically, why, why I'm using those values? So if you look here, you have everything there. So I'm trying to reproduce everything. Let me go and copy that generate. And let me go here. So here you have, and as I mentioned, 
always try to get your prone with the positive prone. The positive prone have a very, very strong weight. So this is why you see sometimes very elaborated prone systems. They try to get it right here. Okay, don't waste your time here in the negative prompt. Negative prompt is to fix small details. Well, big details like hands or wrong faces, strange stuff, it's quite difficult to fix there. And then here you have the, the information about the number of steps, the dimension of the image, or so different dimensions will give you different compositions, your seat number, the specific model I'm using. I'm very important, you need to use exactly the same one here, the sampling, your CFG scale, and then the hash, okay, that related to this one. So I'm using exactly the same library. And look at that, this is the standard generation. And then here it comes the ox scaling. So this is the ox scaling and there are many steps. And look at that, they're using a very aggressive scaling eight, eight times, okay, the pixel, uh, pixel space, then the latent space, 1.5, 10 steps, the noise in level 0 0.5. So remember that this value, you keep it 0 0.5 and you don't add much fantasy in your composition. Okay. And to remind you also all the previous workflows there, the work, those workflows where you manipulate the image. Okay. It is important to, to keep that the noise in 0 0.5. So all around you have it. So in the cases where you want to change the image, so like in painting and out painting, you should put one. Okay. So you put something less than one or probably less than 0 0.9, you are not going to get any results. Okay. And then when you do image to image also, it's up to you, but 0 0.5, usually they don't do anything. And then one is the whole fantasy. So here we have everything. And here we have the information about the clip step, but usually that is last step. Usually it's minus two. Many models I train are trained with minus two. In this case, they don't give the information, but there, for instance, in this second case, look at that, give you click, skip, two. So here I'm assuming also that after reading a little bit, I think all oh, this model was trained with minus two. So I will use that, but changing that you will have different outcomes. So let's go here and we have everything set here. So basically this is that value. So let me go use the turbo and let me launch everything. Okay, so reading the turbo library. Okay, so it's a big checkpoint as usual, doing all the magic. And as you will see, this is this is what I love about turbo that is super fast. So as you try to do this same stuff using the standard SDXL base with or with no refining. In my case, it will take four times more time. And here with this will give you more options. So you see that this is already a fantastic composition. It's different from this, but later we're going to see. But look at that, we have the same seat, seat number. And to show you also, as we change this clip, also will be a slight difference. So let me op op open this one here. And it will do its magic. Okay, so let's wait for the output. And there you go. So we have now this. So as you see, different compositions. So it's like the later you, you stop. So minus one, it will means that it will take all the layers, all the steps that you have. So it will add more fantasy, less fantasy. So as you put there, so it will be the less details that it will add. So some, sometimes you now people like to stop minus five. So kind of controlling the weight that you have between the prompt and the model, all the, all the latent space now that you have in your, in your model and see there that we have this. Okay. So let's go minus two. Let's use this. So at this point, you already have an image minus two. This is a, a nice image. And let, let me get my specific one. So actually this one was nicer. I think it was cleaner. Let me go here. Actually, yeah, it was kind of cleaner. You have the butterfly. Very similar. Okay, so this is the image, and at this point we're done. So now the question is, why are our image is so different from this? And this is the the part that it's not tricky part, but remember that you have batch generations here. So you, basically, you can fix your number, and you can go here and generate many 
different variants, okay? You can evolve exactly this same seed, you can evolve in different images. And this is likely, this is what is happening here. We're going to see that the <clears throat> whoever generated this image generated many, many evolutions of the same image. And here to stress that here, you need also good memory. Now a lot of me a good video card with memory because here you're going to generate all these images. So usually we'll try to gener generate everything in parallel. No? So it's going to generate, uh, put all, everything in memory in parallel. So you can run out of memory. So I think everything still is not clear to me how it's controlled, but I think it will do two images in parallel and then sequential like this, depending now of the parameters that you detect now that it will detect. Uh, in uh, automatic 11, 11 later, going to, well, maybe we're going to do this another video. You will see that also in automatic 11, 11, you can control that, but you have to be very careful because one is specific to load everything in memory. So usually if you put four images in memory with eight gigs video memory, you're going to run out of memory fast. So basically you do two images in parallel and then do many batches sequential. Okay. So at this point, this will take some time. I will let it run uh, real time. And let's see what we get at the end of the generation. Okay, so we're back. So that was time consuming. So I have my images there. So I guess they, I still haven't, I haven't found the, the option to do this new generations in batch and sequential. So I guess what I was doing in parallel was running out of memory and that's why it takes that, that, that long. Okay, but you guess that if you do it sequential, it will be much faster. So here you have the images. By the way, don't forget that I'm doing preview. So if you want to save all your generations, put save or start to right click, save everything. So if you want to see all the images here, you have the X and there you go. And this is what happened here that the, you have the seed, but probably you don't have the right seed, the, the right generation. So as you start to see all your generations, now you need to pick up the one that is closer. It still is not the one that precisely this one, but you start to see that you are getting different generations. And what, what I want to go to, to with this is that you need to pick up your workflow to do images. I think this one uh, is doing like this many generations. And in this case, as I cannot control the how to do the images if sequential or in parallel, and I, I don't have that much memory, it is time consuming. So it's not very attractive. I think it is better to do probably two a batch of two or four, I think four will be handled very well by AGX and then just random here. Okay. And you are going to get more images, but in any case, what we want to do now at this point, just pick one image, the one that you think it is closer to this one. And then we evolve that image. Remember that this is turbo with not many steps. So the resolution, look at that, the details that are not that much. So basically we're going to pick one and then you can click here to pass the one closest to you, what you think you know, or what you would like, and then evolve that one. So in this case, I already did it. Remember this, all my work workflows, I preview images, I don't save them. So if you want to save, don't, don't forget to, to put there uh, to save the images to here. Just erase the bypass and bypassing, or you can right click and save image by image. It's up to you. So in this case, let me go back to my workflow and I have the ox scale one shape. Okay. Let's see where I have the ox scale for this one. Uh, actually, okay. I don't have it, but let's do the ox scale. And, and maybe yes, I think I can have it now. Uh, uh, let's put here. So this is the standard ox scale. And so remember that here you have this step. So this is the final step, which by the way, I think they're not giving all the information because also there are sometimes also you have more refinery steps and some other fancy libraries to, to improve everything. So I'm not going to reproduce this same step because that will be time, very time consuming. So basically just to show you that this step. So at this point, okay, let me go. And I think 
it is this okay so this is the image i want there you go that's the i already have it there so basically what i'm going to do is let me bypass this one go here you up scale to two okay so basically kind of similar okay to to this stuff that you have here but he he or she whatever was using eight and there you go so as you see this is it's called scaling is quite fast in physical space but it's still no you it might solve some problems it might add some problems but this is what you have okay so the next step remember is the latent space is this is not satisfactory you go to latent space latent space is where you enter and you use your model and and the, all the layers and so on to add information to get better resolution so let's go here and basically what i'm doing here Okay, so let me go to show you that you can upscale this one. I don't go too high because I know it will take time. So I will upscale this one 1.2. So at this point, this image is already twice the, the, the one entering. And then your latent space, you go 1.2. So you get an idea. I'm going to use this library. Okay. So in theory, you can also use, and this is information also that is missing there. You can use the, the Dreamwave XL, but this is, this one, uh, uh, I prefer to go to the jogger now because that one is still is this stuff with these steps that you need, you don't need many steps. So let's go high quality. So I like the jogger now and I put here 15 steps. This one, so remember here to control all your parameters, and this is very important the noise. And so 0 0.5 is not going to add much uh fantasy into your starting compositions. You put one. It will be radically different what you have. And coming back here that, okay, you have the noise and strain here, but I think there are many, many steps missing. So if we, we go back to the images, just to talk about a little bit, remember we talk about LoRa and so on. So here, I know clearly you can see that there are a few LoRa here. There are a few LoRa libraries that you can use to, to, to change the skin color, to control eyes, hair, everything. So here behind this one, I'm quite sure that there are at least two or three LoRa libraries and some other fancy upscalers and things like that. That is not everything. This Everything is not described no, in the generation parameter. So let's go now and do this step it will be also a little bit time consuming so and remember also you take this image and you take the the main characteristic of of, of the, your starting image okay so basically you can take your starting prong and let me go and i didn't have it there because they have something else so let me put the ah uh, so let me go and duplicate this uh, so be careful about that, getting also your prom and let me put it here. Uh, no, this is the input and yep. Yeah. Ah, okay. I need here. So, so basically you want to get something similar. So take the main, the main characteristics, not necessarily you need to put everything again, but you take this, you can take main character. Oh, I already have it here. Stupid me. Okay, so in this case, I will put exactly the same prompt, but if you don't have that same prompt or see another image, so basically try, try to put you know, the main characteristic like woman in an armor, I know with a uh, waterfly in here, whatever. So try to capture that one. Not necessarily, this is also optional, it's not compulsory. Also, we will try to, if you don't put anything, it will try just to keep uh, the same uh, composition. And actually, let's do that. Let me get the positive prom out and let's use just the negative and let's see what we have. So at this point, let's wait a little bit. Okay, so we're back. It was, as you guess, a little bit time consuming, a little bit, no, very time consuming. And this is what we have here. So look at our output. And as you can see, it was improved a lot. Now the output from that noisy, now it's a lot of details. However, the composition, the face and so on changed a little bit. 
Okay, so let's see my wall flow. I think I have my image or let's see, let's generate a game, but let's put also here the prompt. So let's check the influence and then I don't want to do this one. So that one also can add some, can change your composition, but this is a spectacular, I have to say. Okay, this is perfect. And well, let's do the exercise again, another image, another hopefully will be less time consuming because I know that this late in space it was the one uh, that was uh, increasing the generation by a lot. So we're back. So this was much, much faster. Okay, probably three, three times faster. So you can see clearly the influence of this factor. Okay, so as you have a lot of memory, yeah, you can increase that. And there you go. So now pretty much we are keeping the same composition. So see the strong influence of your positive prompt trying to keep in the same. So if you know this prompt, yeah, try to use it. If you don't know it, just try to get you know, the main characteristic. Also, it's not compulsive, don't put it. Do, do not put it and then reduce this to 0 0.4, 45, and it will, will catch the main characteristic. But pretty much this is this is this is quite good, amazing. No, it's just perfect. And if you want, you can go through another ox scaling and so on and keep going to get getting something super crispy. Uh just to end this also to mention, so let's go back to the image that we are trying to reproduce. So basically here, what you need just many generations just to get until you get the, the, the right one here, not in the batch, I got memory problems. So if using this, using the, the same zip that is specified here, you need to do batch to get different, uh, evolutions though, to get the machine one or different zips but in any case the you can see that uh they are quite similar however look at the skin and the eyes this looks a little bit cartoonish you know or illustration uh, okay so probably you can put a negative word to avoid illustration or in, in, emphasize more the photorealistic part but here clearly this is telling me no i know no also for a little bit experience that yeah, here there are a few loras to, to make this you know, more realistic, also the photo style illumination and so on. So pretty much I think with this we have we have covered a lot. So these were now the basic workflows in Comfy UI, but also the techniques that we use here, exactly the same you're going to use, to see using automatic 1111. That in my opinion, in many situations is much, much easier, much flexible. Here in Comfy UI, the big advantage is that you get also, you can use immediately the latest development. Instead, when you are in automatic 11.11, it needs to be implemented. It's still no XD, SD Turbo is not fully implemented. The LCN also, there are some problems and some other stuff now that are not fully implemented. However, all the part of control net, personally speaking, I think it works much better there. And I didn't show anything about control net. Also some workflows, but it's upscaling work much better in painting and painting also much better, but it's up to you to decide. But at this point, I think I done with this probably will generate a great some other videos to show some new features later, but this is the basic. Okay, you have in the video description, the link to share all, I will share all this here, the basic one. I really enjoy this season. Okay. And um, well, do not forget to subscribe, to follow us and thank you for your attention and see you next time.